Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining us. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. And uh, we're just going to take you through a, uh, a recap of some of the things that uh, we've already shown. But I want to point out a few other additional functions uh, within the charting of multicharts.net uh, just to kind of go over a couple things to make sure that you have an understanding of uh, some important aspects and functions that I want to show and demonstrate in this particular video segment. So the first thing is I want to show you how to access the data window. It's a pretty simple function. The data window is this little window that you see here to the left of the uh, June mini S&P chart. What that allows you to do is when you hover your mouse cursor over a specific candle. So let me just go ahead and blow this chart up for a second. And watch what happens when I hover my mouse cursor on any of these candles. You'll see that there will be data that will populate within that data window. All right, so this is going to be uh, like, for example, you're interested in seeing open, high, low, close for a particular bar. Or maybe, um, you know, whatever data range you set, you want to go back to a certain bar within that data range. And just see what the market did within that bar, whether you're using a one-minute time frame or a 15-minute time frame. So that's, this data window could be useful at times. So if I, for example, sometimes the customer might accidentally deactivate it as I closed it there, and then you don't see it anymore. So I want to just show you how to get it back if you accidentally close it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have the chart open as I do now, and just go to View at the very top here between File and Insert, and you're going to see an option that says Show Data Window. All right, so if you left-click on that option, now you're going to see that data window that will populate, and now you can just take your mouse cursor, scroll over any candle on the chart itself, and for in this instance here, you can see that on April 27th at 11.15, since I'm using a 15-minute time frame, uh, the price was 2085.10. That's just an average price. But the open was 80.75. The high was 88.75, 77.5 low, and then 86 even close. And you can see that the up volume was about 4,300 contracts roughly and about 4,200 contracts on down volume. But total volume within that 15-minute bar at 11.15 was about 94,537 contracts. And then bar number... It would be, you know, what bar, based on your data range, how much history that you have populated on your chart, the bar number will tell you how what that bar number was within the data range that you set. So I have, uh, let's see, if I go back, format instruments, uh, let's take a look to see how much data history I have. So it looks like I'm plotting 365 days back. All right, so that's pretty much what the purpose of the data window is. It's the main, it's a little function that's unique, not only say unique, but important to have if you want to be able to check information for a particular bar within the chart itself. All right, so if you do lose it, just go to View, and then go to Show Data Window, and you'll get it right back, as you can see here on the screen. Another thing, too, is uh, we, get a, we get a lot of questions sometimes, is if you have multi, a multi-monitor setup, which most of our customers do, and you want to be able to move your chart outside of the workspace. So let me show you what I mean. If I minimize this chart here, if you notice, when I move the chart around, I cannot move the, the chart outside of the workspace. And that's because it's currently attached within the workspace. So if you, want to be, if you want to detach the window and move it onto a different monitor, if you have a multi-monitor display, then just be sure on the top right corner of the chart, you're going to see a little icon that says Detach Window. And it looks like that little, little box with an arrow pointing northeast. So if you left-click that box or that option, you will then see a pin option, which now this means that the window is detached from the workspace, and now I can move it outside of the workspace. So I, you can't see my other monitor at this moment, but I'm, I'm able to move the chart onto the other monitor. And how you know that it's activated is that pin option. And that pin, that stick window function right there, what that does is when I click on any window around the chart, you see how the chart just kind of goes away? So what that allows me to do now is if I pin it, no matter what window I click around that chart, that, that chart will always stay on top. So if that pin is facing south, that means that, it's, that you have the stick window option enabled, and therefore it cannot minimize unless you actually minimize it. All right, so that's what that sticky function does. And if you disable it, then it goes, you can see that the pin is facing west. So now if I click any window around it, you can see how that chart minimizes. All right, so that's pretty much how you detach windows. You, a lot of the, the windows that you see within multi-charts is going to have that, that similar icon. So that's the watch list, which we'll cover later in the video, or better yet, uh, later in our series. But if you click that icon, that's, that's how you detach windows. And that's a very common question that we come across is, hey, I have a multi-monitor set up. How do I move those windows onto a different monitor? Just be sure to detach the window, and then once you do that, you'll see that little pin icon, and that's how you know it's detached. And if you reattach it, that pin icon will go away. All right, so that's how you move different windows within multi-charts outside to different monitor displays if you have a multi-monitor setup. And then, of course, you have the, the toolbar at the top. The toolbar, as you start to get more familiar with the platform, you become more efficient in using the software. Uh, you know, you're going to find yourself using a lot of these shortcut icons on the top toolbar here. 
And uh, I'll probably, you know, later in the series, I'll get more in depth in what some of these functions will do. But it's pretty straightforward. If you hover your mouse cursor over each one of those icons, it will tell you exactly what that icon represents. So you can see point and figure chart, for example. So if I left click on this chart, this mini NASDAQ chart, I blow it up. And then I just, if I just go ahead and want to change this to a hollow candlestick chart, that's going to be an easier way versus right clicking on the chart, go to format instrument, and then I'm going to have to click on the style tab and change it from here. So you can see that's a four to five click process, not as efficient as using the shortcut toolbar at the top. So as you become more familiar with the platform, this is probably going to be your go-to way of changing uh, certain chart types or perhaps using certain uh, chart tools that are available, such as the zoom in option here, or if you want a background drag, for example, if I click that background drag, I can now drag the, char the chart around, as you can see. So that's going to be a, probably the best way to really change and modify your chart just by using that toolbar as you become a little more familiar with the platform. And then in terms of color themes, uh, I want to show you when you right click on the chart, let me go ahead and disable the background drag. If you right click on the chart, there's an option right here that says color theme and you have black, gray, and white. And this was a new addition that they added not too long ago in some of the previous build updates. Uh, it, was, it was really a hassle to change the background color of your chart. So for example, if you had to change the background from white to a different color, you had to right click on the chart and go to format window, and then you'd have to change the color to black. But if you notice, if you look at the right side price column, the prices are not visible because the font of the prices are black. So then you'd have to go in and change all the colors for the, uh, the up and down axis as well as the, uh, basically the Y axis and the X axis, which is going to take more time and it just makes it not as user friendly. So as of late, not too long ago, they created this color theme option. So if you want to change the background colors, like for example, if I go to black, you can see now it automatically adjusts the colors for the price, the up and down axis, so pretty much the Y and X axis. So you don't have to go and make those changes, which is going to make it more of a streamlined process to, to change your background color. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go right back to the white background, uh, but that would probably be the easiest way if you're okay with the three default color templates that it comes with, which would be black, gray, and white. This is what the gray background looks like, and uh, of course, you already saw the white. So that would probably be the easiest way to change the background if you are okay with those three default templates. Uh, otherwise, you can go in there and customize the colors by going to format window and just changing the backgrounds, but just keep in mind if you do that, you're going to have to go in there and change the Y price scale and the X time scale font colors as well to blend with the proper background so you don't have the prices lost because you have the same color scheme. All right, so that's pretty much color themes. And in terms of uh, the last thing I want to cover in this video segment is uh, cascade options. So when you have multiple charts open within multi-charts, you have a quick way to organize charts and have them display properly. And this is why, where if you have, let's say, I'm going to bring up another chart here. So I have a handful of charts. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six charts open. So watch what happens if I go to window. You can see there's an option to either arrange all or I can go to arrange horizontally, vertically, or I can even cascade them. So this is one way of kind of organizing the charts very easily. It's just a quick way to organize certain setups if you don't want uh, the, you know, if you don't want to do them manually and just kind of drag and resize with your mouse cursor. But of course you want to have all the charts open if you want to cascade all the available charts within the platform itself or within your workspace. Because if you notice, it only cascaded three windows, and that's because I only had those three windows up. So I had some of these charts here at the bottom were minimized. So as long as I blow them up, as I am now, you're going to be able to cascade them based on the windows that are, that are all open, as you can see there. So of course, I only have one monitor display, so that particular setup is not ideal. But I just at least want to show you where to go if you want to use that function uh, to kind of streamline and organizing your windows. And of course, from there, you can kind of just move things around and resize them accordingly based on your preference. And other than that, uh, this is a pretty uh, a quick recap. We've already come, covered the, uh, the basic mechanics of how to use the chart, how to insert studies, drawing tools, um, how to format charts, how to format symbols. So we're going to move on to other aspects of the platform, such as the watch list and uh, the order and position tracker, which is pretty important. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.